Hey everyone, it's Miss Rachel coming at you from Harris Lake County Park. We're back in our Longleaf area today for another one of our staff favorites from our park library. Today we're going to be reading The Lorax by Dr. Seuss and learn a little bit about the very special tree here, the Longleaf Pine. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing except old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass some people say if you look deep enough you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old one still lives there. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the one don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffled moof. And on special dank midnights in August he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents, a nail, and the shell of a great 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 grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail and makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. He hides what you've paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his grievous glove. Then he grunts, I'll call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slap down slaps the whisper my phone to your ear, and the old onceler's whispers are not very clear. Since they have come down through a snuggly hose, he sounds as if he has smallish bees up his nose. Now I tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Back when the days where the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the Swomi songs rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the rippless pond came the comfortable sound of the hummingfish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these, and the touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I just knew what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with just one chop. And with great skillfully skill and great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a thneed. The instant I finished, I heard a get zump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I just chopped down. It was sort of a man, describe him? That's hard, I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongue, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What is that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Look, Lorax, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped down just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed is a fine something that all peoples need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool thneed. 
But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just that minute, a chap came along. He thought that the thneed I had knitted was great, and he happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him, shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, I built a radio phone and I put in a quick call. I called my brothers and uncles and aunts. I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting kneads, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, for which hacked off four truffula trees with just one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as bit fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I am also in charge of the brown barbalutes who play in the shade in their barbalute suits and live happily eating truffula fruits. Now thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruits to go around. And my poor barbalutes are getting the crummies cause they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food and I hope that they may. Good luck boys, he cried and he sent them away. I the once there felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business and business must grow, regardless in crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, and I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth, to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. And I went right on biggering, selling more needs and biggering my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back, I was fixing some pipes, when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffed and he snarled and sniffed. Onceler, he cried with a crefulous croak. Onceler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swomy swans, why, they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go, I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up round here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup and Schlappity Schlapp. And what do you do with this leftover goo? Well, I'll show you, you dirty old Wunsler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax, now listen here, dad. All you do is yap, yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, I'm telling you. I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. Turning more truffula trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud thwack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. And then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time at all, my uncles and aunts and everyone all waved me goodbye and they jumped in their cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. 
Now all that was left neath this bad smelling sky was the big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that means, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through all the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Onceler, now that you are here, the words of the Lorax seem perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. So catch, calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed, the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And the truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest to protect it from axes that hack. And then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. The end. Like the truffula tree, the longleaf pine is one of the most ecologically important tree species in the southern United States. Historically, the longleaf pine covered about 92 million acres in its native range. Right now, the longleaf pine is only in about 3% of its native range. The longleaf pine was one of the most sought after timber species of its time. Its slow growth created wood of great strength. The longleaf pine also produced naval stores or tree byproducts that were used extensively in early shipbuilding. Fire is a common tool to help manage the longleaf forest. The longleaf pine has adapted to withstand fire with features such as thick bark and fire resistant grass stage. Here at Harris Lake County Park, we manage our longleaf pines with prescribed burns. Just like in our story, the loss of the longleaf pine forest meant the disappearance for some of our incredible species. Meet the fox squirrel. The fox squirrel, like the barbaloots, had to find new homes when the longleaf forests were cut down. These squirrels are larger and more colorful than our common gray squirrels. While you won't see them in our park, you'll be able to find them in forests in the sand hills and coastal plain of North Carolina. That isn't the sound of a hummingfish hum, but the sound of a gopher frog. The gopher frog is known for the growling or snoring sound of his call. The longleaf pine ecosystem is home to this rare frog. You won't find him here at Harris Lake County Park as he is only found in small localities in the sand hills and southeastern coastal plain. We may not have swimmy swans, but the longleaf pine forest is home to the red cockaded woodpecker. This species is incredibly important as it builds its cavities in mature longleaf pine trees. You may be able to spot these birds in older forests in the southeastern United States. Look for the red cockade or red line on the side of a male's head to identify them. You can explore the longleaf pine here at Harris Lake County Park with a hike on our peninsula trail. Thanks so much for joining me today and we hope to see you guys again real soon.